<laughs> okay, thanks. Anyway, um, so I know a lot of you are still coming back. And what we are trying to do is kind of go through both a guided Reiki journey and other times like we might stay in periods of silence more often and in some of these periods of silence that's for you to be in your own inner experience so if you go back to do this again you can also use like at that time that you're at the river or at any point that you want to pause the recording and spend more time um, in these places or like in the tree. Um, there are times that I can go into places like that, like I'm in the tree of life or I'm greeting the divine animal kingdom or I'm with the river of life that I'll, I'll spend a good amount of time uh, with it and also take your questions with you um, if you have them or if you need an idea or solutions or any kind of problem solving, those are really good ways to spend time once you've elevated your consciousness to these higher levels. And it's always interesting to me in the journeys, we experience ourselves going somewhere else, which in my experience I am doing but it's also always right within me is the real truth because I'm, I'm still right here. So in the Reiki journey techniques, what we thought we'd share a little bit about it this week was how, how this is actually working. And for me, where kind of where I learned about this from Reiki itself and Reiki journey techniques. And, you know, I've been working with Reiki for over 20 years now, but I originally started in my spiritual training, you know, aside from my, my childhood and being raised Catholic. But when I went into my own independent spiritual training, that actually started with shamanism. And I know, you know, many of you know that with the Light Song School of Shamanic Studies and Jan Inglesmith as my teacher. So my original um, experience with Reiki always had a shamanic awareness with it. So my original training was about how to use um, journey techniques to access higher levels of consciousness, spiritual realm, spiritual communication, for all the same reasons, problem solving, innovations, you know, just to be able to live from a, a higher level of awareness and inner awareness, as well as outer awareness. So in my original training with journeying through shamanism, you know, we have the um, upper world, the lower world and the middle world. And in that training, the upper world is the spiritual realms of what we might think of as um, the enlightened realms. The lower realms are also enlightened realms. And that's where you might more traditionally find kind of the earth spirit guides that, that you might work with, but that are in enlightened realms, such as power animals, et cetera. Um, and so then the middle world is like what we think of as this world. And I'm using the words, the earth is the first heaven to kind of explain the same thing where the middle world is, is, you know, the earth and where we live. So the journey techniques that we used for that training was involving drum beats or rattles. And so the sound of the drum is what would take you into that, th that theta state. I think it's theta. I get mixed up on, okay, Robin's shaking her head. Yes. <laughs> on theta and which one's theta, which one's beta. I get them mixed up. Anyway, takes you into a higher level of consciousness to receive answers, 
to receive spiritual communication, spiritual guidance, and also to receive spiritual assistance. In that case, the training was in our healing work. How do, how do you use spiritual energies for your healing work? So you access all of that through a journey. Well, three years into my shamanic training is when I received Reiki. And Jan, my teacher, actually you know, wanted me to go get Reiki and to actually focus on Reiki um, as a shamanic practice for light song as you know, one of the things that we teach as part of the training. Knowing that Reiki energy naturally helps you and assists you with elevating your consciousness. So I originally received Reiki though at the time and her encouragement um, because my horse went lame. And this horse was like my lifetime dream horse of all the horses I had ever had. I love this horse. And it was clear that it was a permanent lameness injury. And so one day I asked him why he went lame because he was only five. So it was really unusual. And he said he went lame to deliver me to my power to heal. And he showed me putting my hands on him. So of course I knew it was Reiki because I knew enough about Reiki. Also Robin had been receiving Reiki because of a, a knee injury she had um, through sports. So, you know, Jan was encouraging me anyway, very long story short, I actually ended up procrastinating and not following my horse's guidance. And about eight months later, a woman came into my booth at uh, my business and said that she was a psychic and had a message for me from my horse and told me that he told her to tell me that he had been giving me a message and had told me to do something and I wasn't doing what he said and I needed to do what he was telling me because life was coming and I was gonna need it. So that's when I immediately received Reiki and got my attunements and it was, it was such a, like this instant, when I say instance, I don't know if it was like that minute or two weeks later, but 22 years later, it felt instant recognition and resonance with the energy. So I always started using Reiki from that point on in all of my shamanic techniques. And so I was encouraged by Jan to really develop that and get skilled at that. And then that's when I studied with William Rand, because of course he's so skilled. And that really started a, a more intensive approach with Reiki energy. So what I've always done with Reiki is asked in a, let's say I learned a shamanic technique such as soul retrieval, for instance, asking Reiki energy, how does it do that same thing? If I need to remove negative energy or what we call in shamanism an extraction, I'm going to extract unwanted energy, asking the Reiki energy, how do you do that? And so all the different techniques, and then of course the filling back up, like how does the Reiki energy do that? Well, that also included the Reiki journey techniques that I always asked Reiki, well, if I'm going to journey, how do I use Reiki? How do I do the same thing using Reiki energy? So really understanding that what a journey is doing is helping you entrain. So entrainment means that you're going to lift to, if there's a higher frequency, you're going to lift to it. Your consciousness will lift to it like harmonies. So if there are two harmonies, they will eventually start harmonizing or two sounds they'll eventually start start in training to each other so that's what happens with your life force and what happens with your consciousness and so tech so 
how you do that, how you access a journey state is really a technique. And then the energy that you're working with that helps you do that, it helps you get there. So drums can, a drum sound can get you there. Music can get you there. Many of you may have other ways that, you know, lift your consciousness to it. I wanted to know how Reiki energy did that. So that was always my question. How can I use it? So we know the distance symbol, HSZ or HZS, I don't know, you know that the, the, <laughs> the abbreviation of it for the distance symbol is really a bridge of light. And so I started using that bridge of light for all my journeys. And if I were was journeying to the upper world, and even though I still used drums, if I was in like a circle where we were drumming, but on my own, I just started using the distance symbol as a bridge of light. Now, for me, I imagine myself walking over it, but you don't have to. You can just activate it, and everybody is going to experience that happening differently. So for some of you, you may, you know, see yourself going across the bridge. Another might feel yourself going across the bridge, and another one of you might just say, I'm going across the bridge and I'm there, you know, and, and you think about going across the bridge rather than see or feel it. Those are all about intuition styles. We'll have to cover that another time. Um, and I see we're getting to time for breakout rooms, but so I just want to finish up with, I started to use the distance symbol as that bridge of light, regardless of which spiritual realm I was trying to access, which state of consciousness I was trying to access, because that bridge does the exact same thing. It entrains us to the higher frequencies, because Reiki itself is a higher frequency of energy. So for me and that my own the way that I perceive things as also spiritual realms that I like to engage with spiritual beings I like to engage with. For me now, I'm using all really all Reiki energy for that experience. And I did that intentionally. Like, I need to know how this works, if I'm going to teach it, if I am going to understand it, plus it just really resonated with me to do it that way. So I've been working with the Reiki energy and then you know, Robin and I started teaching the, um, the next step classes where this is, we go really in depth into this. And so we started also working with these spiritual locations. So using that bridge of light and in what we did today to cross over to the enlightened spiritual realm, that's really a, a very, very much like a Reiki energy. And none of this is hierarchical. That's one of the things that happens a lot of times is making it a better than it, it. I just like it, you know, I mean, more than anything, it's like, I like where I'm going. I like the frequency of it. I like the energy of it. I also like many of the other places I've traveled to and experienced and those frequencies and energies. So, you know, there's, there's all different experiences that you can have spiritual locations you can go to. I'm very clear I only want to be in the enlightened realms. So that part I'm clear with. And so taking that bridge of light and inviting myself to go to what we call the third heaven, an enlightened realm where all there is is love and it's no longer a dual realm. And then going to the river of life. In this case, we went to the tree of life, met the divine animal kingdom you know, those, those beautiful beings of the light that are caring for the animals of the world, the same with the trees, the waters, you know, the colors, all of it. So when you're journeying with the energy, yes, just Cynthia, just like that, like different neighborhoods, that's exactly 
I always think of that. And so um, anyway, as we're going to those realms, and as you learn how to do that and to use the Reiki energy for it, you can also apply it to your daily life. And what happens is it starts to wake up that part of you that is accessing your higher consciousness all the time. You know, I mean, I can't say I'm in it all the time. I'm still human. But, you know, mostly I can, I can access that answer my questions, ask my questions, listen for answers, go deeper within. Um, I'll do this like we do these to understand, say, what we're going to talk about today. We do journeys. When we wrote the animal Reiki manual and course, we did journeys to receive that information. And the same thing with all the other work that we do, it's always, and the next step, it's always, you know, we do everything through journeys to get to that place where we're, we're deeper within, in our higher levels of consciousness to do that. So I know Robin talked about a lot of that last week, but putting it into the context of just understanding, you know, there's lots of different ways to do all of this. And so understanding for those of you that are working with Reiki energy, you can use it for journeying. You can use it for journey techniques. And um, we did write an article. We wrote a couple of articles about it. I mean, a lot of them are roundabout, but one, and these are on our website under our Reiki library, reikilifestyle.com. And one of them is called Reiki journey techniques. And the other one I think that's really relevant with this topic is the one called, um, I think it's spiritual guidance and Reiki, something. I think it's awareness. Well, the inner, oh yeah, the inner awareness. That's a third one. Oh no, you're right. It's spiritual guidance. Yeah. It's spiritual, Sorry. spiritual guidance that both of those kind of work together pretty specifically about Reiki journey techniques. Reiki for spiritual guidance. is the Reiki for spiritual guidance. Yeah. So the inner awareness one is relevant, but it's these two are the specific ones about that. So anyway, we just thought we'd share that with you because, you know, you can, you can use the, the, um, the Reiki energies that you're already working with and, you know, and intend to go on journeys with it to access your, your own higher levels of consciousness and to access, you know, spiritual realms. Today, you know, we invited you to meet the divine animal kingdom see if any one of them came through uniquely for you. And if so, it's like a relationship. You can also use Reiki to um, meet with them further and, uh, you know, have, you can meet in places like you guys know you can go over that bridge already the way we just did today and do it for yourself and go wander around there and you can meet the divine animal kingdom. And uh, if you have a special one there or the enlightened ones are there too. So you can meet with them too. 